A hundred things we all find absolutely infuriating about our tech. Let's go. Because new iPhones record videos in HDR by default now, you get so much social media content that's just excessively bright. It wastes your battery while blinding you with no tangible benefit. The PS5's disk drive faces the opposite way to what you might expect. And as soon as you realize it, you start to second guess your second guess, gaslighting yourself into getting it wrong every single time till the end of time. Sent from my iPhone being added by default to every single email sent from an iPhone. It was tacky in 2008 and it's definitely tacky in 2024. Smartphone predictive text that's so insistent it's correct that even when you type something and it replaces it, and then you retype that same thing, it'll just replace it again. Streaming services were originally meant to be the easier, cheaper alternative to cable TV. Now you have to pay for so many different ones that it's literally just as bad. Speaking of TVs though, how poor and laggy TV interfaces usually are. Especially puzzling considering how good the smartphones made by the same companies are. The baked in TV picture modes ruin everything. Movies are designed to look a certain way and run at a certain frame rate. And so putting a weird filter over them and adding in extra frames to make them ultra fluid doesn't make them feel more like cinema mode like the name suggests, it just makes them look incorrect. And what's with all these TV remotes where the OK button is also a scroll wheel that unavoidably scrolls as you're trying to press it? You have literally 30 other pretty much useless buttons you could have replaced, but no, let's strap together the two things you use the most in a way that doesn't allow you to use either properly. And what's with the names of TVs? They're all practically indistinguishable gobbledygook, and so anytime I'm trying to cast one, I'm very concerned that I'm actually going to cast to someone else's TV, especially in a hotel room when there's like 50 different ones you could be connecting to. Oh, and to finish it off, flat screen TV speakers are particularly bad at projecting quiet audio, so dialogue is practically inaudible to start with, so you turn the volume up and then proceed to get deafened when it switches over to an action scene. Websites that have five-step captures, because apparently uncovering indecipherable hieroglyphs like this, or continuously spotting the traffic light in an image like I'm on some sort of disciplinary road safety course, are now a requirement to prove that I'm human? Oh, and then, what do you do when the traffic light just spills over onto the next box? Like, what kind of psychopath decided to not just realign the image so you don't have an existential crisis about what it means for something to be in something? How almost all laptops, no matter the price, seem to have terrible webcams and gaming headsets, terrible microphones. When you're struggling to remember your password, so you're forced to click, forgot my password, but then the system tells you that your new password can't be the same as any of your old passwords, at which point you remember what your old password actually was, but now I have to set a new one that you're in inevitably going to forget the next time you ask for your password. Actually, just passwords in general. We're constantly being told to set a different password for every single website, and at the same time to make every single one of those passwords the most complicated alphabet spaghetti that we possibly can. Which is such a fiddly thing to keep track of in a world where 3D face scanners and fingerprint scanners, they've been around for ages. Like, why can't a YouTuber secure their YouTube account with the actual face that they use for their channel? Why does the iPhone have seemingly no ability to display a comma without going into a separate submenu? Like, does Apple want me to forget punctuation exists? Why does every Amazon service have like the worst UI known to man? Like Prime Video. Why do they bury the option to continue watching the show you're watching as if it's not the first thing you'd want to click? Or just on the Amazon storefront, there is so much sponsored content that even with the whole rating system, it's really hard to find what's actually good and what's not. Scrolling web pages. You know those ones that when you scroll down, instead of moving down, down, it actually just scrolls through an animation. It never looks as good as I assume these companies think it does, and you just feel like you're being prohibited from navigating in the way that you've been taught to. Everyone thought the Nintendo Switch was going to get themes at some point, and they'd be forgiven for thinking so given that there is an entire menu dedicated to them, which to this day contains two themes, basic white and basic black. I mean, the PSP from 2005 had themes. What are you doing, Nintendo? <sighs> printers. Specifically, why do I need to buy a coloured ink cartridge if I want to print in black and white, especially since my black ink cartridge is completely full? Obvious scam that no one's ever fixed. But also, it's so misleading how the printers themselves are sold for basically cost price to lock you in, and only once you're locked in and you have no other choice do they sell you the ink cartridges for about three times that price every single year, with each ink cartridge containing about five drops of the stuff. And if you so much as dare to try a third-party ink cartridge just to save some of that, many printers are designed to detect them and shut down in protest. Why do I get excited about new phone colors when I know that I'm just going to slap a case on it anyway? Applications asking for a suspicious number of permissions. Like, why does my wallpaper app need to make and receive phone calls? And the worst part of it is, because you never get shown exactly what those apps are using each permission for, you either have to decide, screw it, I'm 
downloading nothing or just accept the fact that you're okay with giving the app everything. How Ticketmaster has become basically the sole supplier of so many concert tickets, allowing them to charge whatever they feel like to do so, and also removing the incentive for them to make their website anything better than the anxiety-inducing, countdown-filled, unstable mess that it is. Falling phones are really hard to look after. It's just frustrating how you can spend so much money on something and take the best possible care you can of it, and it will still likely end up with dust finding its way under the pre-applied screen protector. Or when I use these flip phones, I'm constantly missing photo opportunities due to fiddling to get them open in time. How anytime I decide I like the idea of doing a bit of work outside, the brightness of my laptop screen steps in to disagree. <laughs> when you're not ready for the webcam to start recording so suddenly, and everyone on the phone call gets a front row seat to your double chins. <gasps> How mobile phone carriers try to screw customers at every possible turn. Like for starters, how they bundle together the price of the phone and the SIM in a monthly fee that is absolutely silly, like $100 a month. Knowing full well that many people will reach the end of their contract, completely forget to upgrade phones, and just be paying like 10 times what they should for what's effectively a SIM-only deal. It's just a scummy way to make money. And worse still are the abroad fees. They're so excessive, they should be illegal. I was in a situation where I was in Africa last year, and I was being charged one dollar per megabyte of roaming data I was using. So let's say I wanted to watch an original quality Mr. Who's the Boss video. Do you know how much I would have been charged? Five thousand five hundred dollars. What a joke. There needs to be a better way to transfer files between iPhone, Android, Mac, Windows without using third-party software. Like, if you've tried to use Bluetooth recently, you'll know it's an absolute travesty. Apps that spam you with promotional notifications, which you're pretty sure you never asked for and you have no idea how to get rid of. And even worse is when those annoying notifications are bundled in with the ones you actually need to see. So you either decide you have to put up with all of them or lose half the functionality of your app. The classic. When you can't get your full-size USB connector in on the first try, so you turn it around and try and squeeze it in, only to realize you were right the first time and you may have actually damaged your connector. So glad USB-C exists now. But that makes it all the more jarring when companies decide, do you know what? Even though this completely universal charging standard that supports ultra-fast charging, that's fully reversible, and that people already have the cable for at home exists, yeah, yeah, you know what? Let's use a DC port on this device. That's a great idea. The weather on the Windows 11 hotbar seems to be always wrong for some reason. And obsessed with saying that something is a record low or a record high temperature. Nintendo have an absolute goldmine of historic classic video games. But why are they tying people's ability to play them with having a continuous Nintendo online subscription? Like, what? do those two things even have to do with each other? And this brings me on to how older video games, they aren't being preserved the way that all other media is. Because being able to play a game is reliant on either you having the original hardware it was designed for, or the game company specifically deciding that it wants to remake it for a new piece of hardware, we're in a market now where 87% of classic video games are completely unavailable. And that scares me. And then Switch Joy-Cons have pretty unacceptable connectivity issues still, let alone the almost inescapable drift that makes your joysticks move even if you're not moving them, which does not bring joy. That TikTok voice makes me physically convulse. Hey, that was rude. Say that to my face, you little- See what I mean? Taking your phone out your pocket to find your flashlight has been on the whole time. Now, I personally love it when Face ID decides but I just look too rough to unlock the phone. Devices that only seem to wirelessly charge when you place them in the exact right spot. So you find yourself surgically planting them like you're in some sort of operating theater. And even then you find half the time they start and just stop, even though they haven't moved. People playing their music out loud on speakers on a packed bus or train. Like, do they just not care? Or are they genuinely unaware that people don't want to hear their favorite SoundCloud rapper? Sony's naming schemes. It will forever baffle me that this company decided that the best name for their headphones was the WH-1000XM5 instead of just the Sony XM5. Or for their phones, deciding to call the bigger phone the Sony Xperia 1 5, and then the smaller phone the Sony Xperia 5 5. And then just assuming that the average user is gonna be able to look at the name of this phone, even though it's not written, and know that it's actually called the Xperia 1 Mark 5. Honestly, this could be its own video. Why is Eggman able to run just as fast as Sonic? Products that tack AI or smart on themselves just because they have more than one feature. And besides, do you really need a smart fridge? 
Windows requiring a restart for every single update, even for the most minuscule bug fixes that are going to affect literally four people around the world. And also, Windows update and shut down just half the time seems to self-decide instead to update and restart. How Google Drive's ability to download big files is just broken. Like, it'll try and zip them up into something more manageable, but then I guess realize what it's undertaking and just decide that's too much work? You had one job. Alexa, even today, refusing to support Google search. Like a child that decides it wants to be best friends with, well, Bing, but that's obviously a mistake. How so many high-end laptops make you feel like you've got a superpower because of their blinding performance. So long as you're plugged in, and the second you unplug them, they shrivel up into a wet towel. Autosave features that decide not to autosave right when you need them the most. More video games really need to start adding in a have you played one of these before option to avoid the long ass tutorial that every beginner needs, but is a total chore for veterans of the series. I mean, I can't even tell you how many times I've been taught how to catch a Pokemon. It's not like it's changed in the last 25 years. Those mobile game ads for games that don't exist. Like, why don't they just actually make the games that they know people would rather play? Well, thankfully, someone actually did. There's a whole game on Steam that is all about recreating them. The music sync setting on smart bulbs. How oh, it never seems to work properly. Uneven bezels. That's literally it. How Netflix doesn't just let you read the blurb of your movie in peace, but instead insists on starting it anyway. Quick time events during cutscenes. I don't mind mashing square so that Spider Man will stop the car he just zipped over to, but if I've been watching a bunch of people talk for 10 minutes straight, I don't want to have to suddenly panic to pick up my controller in a hurry with my Cheeto dust encrusted fingers. I thought by playing a mini movie, you're communicating to me that it's the perfect time for a little snack break. Things that don't need to be online all the time, like single player games or or, you know, your entire home's smart lighting system, but that force you to stay online just so that you're either ready to make a purchase at all times, or they can continuously keep track of if you've paid the latest monthly installment. Every time I turn on my Xbox, there seems to be yet another software update. All I want to do is to play an offline co-op game made like 15 years ago, which definitely doesn't need updates, but it insists. And whether I like it or not, I have to verify my accounts, I have to download the update, I have to install the update before I can. All while trying to type on the highly unintuitive controller keyboard. Another console gripe, while both PS5 and Xbox, in theory, have the ability to resume games immediately, even days after they've been suspended, the game devs themselves, by making everything always online, basically lock you out of using that feature. There's always some sort of server that I seem to be getting kicked from every time I try it. The trend of removing ports on laptops. Like, surely the fact that these dongles have now become Amazon bestsellers is a sign that it's not helping. GPS that only seems to face the right way half the time, so you actually just have to start walking one way to work out if it's the right way. How different audio devices have different audio balancing, so if you're not careful when you switch between them with your headphones, you may well not be hearing properly for three days. The renaming of Twitter to X and how it's one of the stupidest branding decisions of all time. I mean, Twitter was one of the most recognizable brands on Earth, to the point where their name was actually a verb. Very few companies ever achieve this. Only really Google comes to mind. And so to throw it all away because, well, X is the coolest letter? <laughs> it's baffling. Not to mention that typing in x.com into your browser window looks incredibly sus. Wi-Fi connected. Internet not available. The way the PS5 UI whines at you when you turn it off at the plug really guilts you hardcore about not using the power button. How games consoles are more powerful than they've ever been, and yet less able than ever to actually let you play multiplayer with someone on the same device. Console can't read your disc, so you take it out, you do nothing, you reinsert it, and it magically works. Video game sizes are enormous now, so big that when you buy the physical game, you're not actually buying the physical game, you're just buying a portal to be able to download it. Which also means a lot of the time when you buy a game now, you no longer permanently own the game like you used to with older consoles. Your ability to play that game in the future is dependent on the health of Sony servers and Microsoft servers and, more worryingly, Nintendo servers. In-app purchases on games that you've already purchased. And then what hurts a lot more is that those in-app purchases are specifically designed to gouge as much cash out of you as possible. Like forcing you to buy the in-game premium currency to be able to make the purchases, but then making sure that the amount of in-game currency you can buy doesn't exactly match with how much you need to spend. Online forms that you can't say progress on partway through. And then when you're just about to finish, trying to swipe sideways and actually swiping all the way back 
to the beginning. Or on your phone, spending 25 minutes getting immersed in an article, only to tap something near the top of your screen and inadvertently scroll all the way to the top. Websites that constantly rename and edit articles for SEO, especially misleading for tech news because you could well be reading something that was actually written two years ago, but because one word on the web page has been updated, it now shows up as if it's brand new. Searching for ages to the solution of a tech problem, only to stumble across a seven-year-old Reddit thread where the question asker just suddenly says, oh, it's fixed without saying how. The unbelievable new tide of AI-generated spam emails, which are just now reaching the level of sophistication to be basically indistinguishable from human emails. How every single thing needs to be a subscription now, to a stupid degree, like for things you already own, like a piece of software that you've already paid a one-off fee to purchase, or like that time that BMW decided to charge people to heat the seats in their car, but got a full tech fails video for a proper lowdown on that one. And what makes it worse is deliberately misleading website design that specifically obstructs those key options like being able to cancel your membership or unsubscribe from the mailing list, just making it so annoying to unsubscribe that some people might just decide to stay subscribed. And speaking of subscriptions, I just want to say thank you, because we're like this close now to being in the final million subs between us and Apple, which is the home stretch. In a restaurant where there are no physical menus and the QR code is not working either, so uh, I'll take a tap water. The lack of clear standards when it comes to USB cables. While some can literally be 12 megabits per second, others can be 10 gigabits. And for an average consumer, it's not really clear which is which. Going abroad on holiday and suddenly every single one of your accounts thinks you're an imposter. How all the best phones nowadays are too big to reach the whole screen with your thumb. So. I just call people whose numbers are on the right hand side. Companies who say they don't give you anything with your smartphone for the environment, but then proceed to sell you those same contents separately. When sites try to redirect you to their app, which you already have installed, but it instead for some reason decides to either take you to the App Store page or the web page version. Why does this happen so much? And just before my top 10, if you decided that you actually wanted to build a website yourself that people would be excited to land on, then I've just started using a tool called TenWeb you kind of have to see it to believe it. So you open the site, it asks you several questions about your business, and as soon as you answer those questions, it uses a powerful AI model to literally, in front of your eyes, generate a completely custom, personalized site. A full WordPress site, as if you'd coded it yourself. You can make any final tweaks at the end, which is also made simple thanks to an intuitive editor. They do the hosting, the backups, the security. You don't need to think about anything. Link in the description to learn more. Okay, final 10. Those incredibly annoying, wait, don't skip this ad. Then you're gonna miss out YouTube ads that you're gonna skip. How the do you like our app pop-up comes in about 12 seconds after booting it up for the first time. Spotify and how it only lets you use offline features if you turn on offline mode. If I've downloaded a podcast, why does it only show up if I tell the app that I have no signal? Why does the DualSense controller's microphone default to on? Surely it would make more sense for the default to be off and then the LED light to indicate when it is on, as opposed to the other way around. That way, while you're trying to line up the perfect long range headshot, you wouldn't have to hear the incessant background noise of concerned parents telling their kids they should probably do their homework now. Seeing the notification number on an app, telling you that something needs to be actioned, but having absolutely no idea how to clear it. How you can't use Face ID or Touch ID after your device has been restarted. Your iPhone automatically backing up all of your photos, even if you have tons of spare internal storage, and you only realizing it's done that when you're trying to show someone a memory and realize you can't access it. How you never get close to your advertised Wi-Fi speeds, and how 5G is so poor in so many countries that when that little icon pops up in the corner, it's often more of a concern than it is a convenience. How the YouTube app doesn't have a back button. So when you're deep down in your rabbit hole and you wanna to go to the previous video, you actually just have to exit the whole thing and start from the beginning. So yeah, you're not alone in your frustrations. Let me know your worst ones and maybe we'll do a follow-up.